Are you the reserved guest I was expecting? I have something important to discuss with you. Would you mind sparing a moment? As I was about to enter the restaurant, a woman in a chef's attire, wearing a tense expression, approached me. Intrigue, I wondered what she wanted to confirm regarding my meal. However, when I listened to her, I was hit with a shocking revelation that made me go pale. My name is Emily Thompson, 31 years old, working in the advertising industry, she began. I work diligently to create better advertisements, and although it's a challenging job, it's incredibly rewarding. My husband, John, whom I met through work, is a year older than me, and we've been married for a year. Being a dual-income household, we efficiently share our household chores and help each other manage our lives. Initially, our interactions were solely work-related, but as time went by, we started having more personal conversations and grew closer. Closer I realized that we shared similar interests and values, and I started developing feelings for him. Fearing that we might not see each other often after our collaborative project was coming to an end, I mustered the courage and confessed my feelings to him. Despite my nervousness, he accepted my feelings, and we started dating. After a year, he proposed, and we got married. Before marriage, John revealed that he had been previously married and was divorced. They were married for about a year, had no children, and mutually decided to part ways due to differing values. It seemed like John regretted not being able to make his previous marriage work. He appeared a bit reserved when it came to love, probably because of his past experience. But I understood. As long as there were no lingering issues, I didn't mind his past. It wasn't about wanting happiness for marriage, but wanting to live my life alongside John. So I accepted the fact that John was divorced and went ahead with the wedding. Our married life was filled with happiness, but slowly, the real implications of John being divorced began to unravel. After our wedding, we moved to an apartment close to both our workplaces, and John's parents live nearby, and we get along well. Our married life has been smoother than I anticipated. Initially, I had concerns about living so close to my in-laws, fearing potential conflicts, but they were always kind to me. Given our work schedules, John and I hardly have time during the weekdays, but we make the most of our weekends living with my husband. Due to both of us working, we don't get much leisure time together on weekdays, except for brief conversations at dinner. Therefore, we spend a lot of time together on weekends. We both enjoy eating and often cook dishes we want to try at home. Ideally, dining out would be great, but I have an allergy to fruits from the Rosache family, so I can't casually eat out. Even when I think a dish doesn't contain these fruits, they might be used as a hidden ingredient, making it tedious to constantly check with restaurants. Even a slight touch causes my skin to turn red and swell. I feel bad asking about ingredients at restaurants and have developed an aversion to dining out due to this. I developed this allergy as an adult and initially, I was taken aback since I hadn't expected it. I recall a time when I ate a lot of strawberries and my mouth swelled up, making it difficult to breathe. I used to eat fruits frequently and after getting tested at the hospital, I was devastated to find out about my rosache fruit allergy. Discovering that I could no longer eat favorites like strawberries, apples, pears, and peaches saddened me. I've had reactions after eating food I thought was safe, only to find out they contained allergens, which further discouraged me from dining out. This made me apprehensive about buying ready-made meals or snacks, adding a bit of stress to my life. Perhaps due to the initial severe allergic reaction and the sadness of not being able to eat my favorite fruits, I became overly cautious about checking ingredients during meals with my husband. While we were dating, my constant checks made me feel apologetic. However, I can't feel at ease without thorough confirmation, and without it, I can't fully enjoy meals. Still, we love eating. My husband and I would select ingredients and enjoy cooking together, 
a routine that helped reduce my excessive worries. Fortunately, both my husband and his parents understood my allergies, easing the mental burden I felt after getting married, especially my mother-in-law, who had a deep understanding of allergies due to her father's severe wheat allergy. Wheat is commonly used in many products, and even a little bit affects him. Allergies can be lethal, so we were very careful. She explained that she researched my allergy and always ensured that meals were safe for me when we dined at her place or went out. She took extra precautions, allowing me to enjoy meals without worries. You shouldn't have to be scared during meals. I'll make sure everything is safe for you, she told me, which almost moved me to tears. I have a great relationship with my in-laws, especially my mother-in-law, who treats me like her own daughter. We'd often go out together, and my husband and his parents are wonderful people. The concerns I initially had about my allergies have vanished. One day, a project I proposed at work was successful, earning me a promotion which I excitedly shared with my family. They were all thrilled, especially my mother-in-law. While spending time with her, she invited me to celebrate at an upscale restaurant. That's a very fancy place, isn't it? I can't let you do that. I hesitated. The restaurant was in a luxurious hotel nearby, which I had always dreamed of visiting since my student days. However, it was truly upscale, and I felt it was too extravagant, even for a celebration. You don't have to hold back. This is such a joyous occasion. Let me treat you, she insisted, genuinely happy about my promotion. Her sentiment warmed my heart, but I had reservations. I remembered visiting the restaurant's website before my allergy developed and dreaming of tasting their fruit-filled tart someday. The restaurant often uses fruits from the Rosache family. While I appreciated my mother-in-law's kindness, besides the issue of the restaurant being upscale, I'm hesitant because they frequently use fruits from the Rosache family, to which I'm allergic. Whenever I dined out with my mother-in-law in the past, we informed the restaurant of my allergy beforehand. But each time, I felt guilty asking them to accommodate my dietary restrictions. So we often chose restaurants that seldom use my allergenic foods. I worry that even if we inform this restaurant about my allergy, it might inconvenience them due to their frequent use of fruits, of course. Dishes without these fruits are safe for me and I'm tempted to try them. However, considering the kitchen likely processes these fruits as well, the risk scares me. In the end, I decided to decline the offer because of my concerns about an allergic reaction. Still, my mother-in-law was keen on the idea. I'll inform them about the allergy when I make the reservation. Don't worry. I'd also have a connection there, so they'll take good care of us she said. I was surprised to hear that she had a connection to the restaurant, given that neither she nor my husband had ever mentioned it. However, I assumed it wasn't something she boasted about. Considering my mother-in-law's enthusiasm and my genuine interest in the restaurant's cuisine, we decided to have lunch there together. Given that it was a suggestion from my mother-in-law, who had always been considerate of my allergies, I felt relieved thinking there was nothing for me to worry about. When I told my husband about this, he was surprised to hear that his mother had connections at the restaurant. He'd also mentioned that the restaurant sometimes serves fruit, and he appreciated their consideration for allergies. When I shared with my husband that my mother-in-law had informed the restaurant about my allergies during the reservation and that they would take precautions, he seemed relieved. It's a celebration of your promotion, right? Make sure to enjoy yourself, he said with a laugh. Initially, I declined because of my allergies, but I had always admired the restaurant, so I was excited about dining there. On the day I had been eagerly waiting for, since it was a weekday, I took the half day off after finishing my morning work. I planned to head straight to the restaurant. Being a high-end place, I chose a more formal outfit than usual and paid extra attention to my appearance. When going to work, colleagues noticed my attire and asked about my plans. 
When I told them about the meal, they wished me a good time. Before I left the office, excitedly, as I entered the hotel entrance, my mother-in-law was already there. The two of us headed to the restaurant on the first floor, and since we had a reservation, we were immediately escorted to our table. Our reservation was for 1 o'clock p.m., but due to the busy lunchtime, we were informed that the serving might be a bit delayed. Understanding the popularity of the high-end restaurant, I decided to order just drinks for the time being and wait patiently. Having already finished work and being encouraged by my mother-in-law, I ordered champagne. We enjoyed our conversation while waiting for our meal. I've had champagne before. The one I had that day tasted the best. Feeling the effects of the alcohol and the anticipation of dining at a restaurant I had longed for, I was in high spirits. From the dishes at the neighboring tables, I could tell the food looked delicious, and I eagerly awaited our meal. Suddenly, my phone rang from inside my bag. Realizing I hadn't turned it off during my meal with my mother-in-law, I tried to shut it off. Seeing the incoming call was from work, I sobered up immediately, worried that there might be a problem. I excused myself from my mother-in-law and stepped out of the restaurant to take the call, ensuring no one was around in case of sensitive information. The call was regarding a document I had submitted earlier that day. My colleague urgently needed clarification. Relieved that it wasn't because of an error on my part, I answered their questions and wrapped up the call in about five minutes. As I was about to turn off my phone to go back and enjoy my meal, an unfamiliar woman approached me. Excuse me, you're the customer who made a reservation for today's meal at the restaurant, right? The woman was dressed as a chef, presumably from the restaurant's kitchen. She looked rushed and a bit out of breath, with a concerned expression. I wondered why she would come out during such a busy time. I was puzzled, but when she said she needed to confirm something, I answered her questions. Her face went pale, and she urgently told me to leave the hotel immediately. It's dangerous to go back to the restaurant now. Please leave the hotel and ensure your safety immediately. Suspicious of the woman's intense demeanor, I asked for clarification. Once I grasped the situation, I felt the blood drain from my face. I quickly hopped into a taxi waiting in front of the hotel and headed home. That evening, my mother-in-law called. When I picked up, she was furious about me leaving her at the hotel and returning home without saying anything, causing embarrassment since she had reserved a special course. You had everything set up to celebrate and you just left without a word. Don't you know basic manners? What kind of upbringing did you have? She was angry in a way I had never seen from my mother-in-law before, and she started to berate me. I had always thought of my mother-in-law as a kind and gentle person, but there was no trace of that now. I believed that the kind mother-in-law I had known would be upset if I left without saying anything, and would also be concerned about whether something had happened to me. However, she was furiously yelling with such intensity that I began to believe the rumors about her were true. As I remained silent, she continued to berate me further, complaining even about my parents and how they raised me. You've been silent this whole time. Don't you realize you've done something wrong? You're not fit to be my son's wife. After a long tirade, she finally seemed to calm down a bit. I then quietly posed a question to her. You told me that you informed the restaurant about my allergies when you made the reservation today, and I could relax, right? But the restaurant wasn't aware of my allergies. So what happened? In fact, the meal today had ingredients that I was allergic to, not only in the dessert but also in the main courses. The allergenic ingredients were used in marinades and sauces, which weren't apparent from just looking. The woman who approached me earlier had taken the reservation call from my mother-in-law, and she said that no mention of my allergies had been made. However, she noticed the allergy badge on my bag and came to check just in case. Being the chef responsible for our meal that day, 
she immediately noticed the inclusion of the allergenic ingredients. If she hadn't informed me, I would have unknowingly consumed the food with allergens, which would have resulted in a severe allergic reaction. Initially, I doubted that my mother-in-law would purposely make me consume allergens, but considering the woman took time out of her busy schedule to inform me, I quickly believed her. Furthermore, this woman knew about my mother-in-law's true nature, and she seduced my situation, advising me to leave immediately and ensure I went somewhere my mother-in-law would not follow. The reason she knew my mother-in-law was that she was my husband's ex-wife, now working under the alias Kate Young. Seeing me with my mother-in-law, she realized I was the new wife and decided to help me out. She assumed I was the new wife because she believed that my mother-in-law wouldn't have female friends, especially someone of a similar age, after getting married to my husband. The ex-wife lived with his parents and was subjected to significant mistreatment by my mother-in-law before they married. She, like me, thought the mother-in-law was gentle and kind, which left her quite baffled once they started living together. When my husband or father-in-law wasn't around, the ex-wife faced continuous criticism for her housework and was always subjected to snide remarks. Being a full-time housewife, she had no escape. Despite her culinary skills, honed from attending a professional cooking school, the mother-in-law still found faults with her dishes, even discarding them at times. She considered discussing this with her husband, but the mother-in-law was adept at concealing her true nature, especially around him, feeling her complaints would fall on deaf ears. The ex-wife aimed to gather evidence, however, as she had recently become a full-time housewife, she lacked funds and was almost constantly under the watchful eye of the mother-in-law. Unable to gather proof and without anyone to confide in, she felt trapped in this life. So she fled in the form of a divorce. Despite never having worked before, she utilized her culinary license to seek employment and was lucky to land a job at the restaurant. She worked diligently, and over time, the memories of her mistreatment faded and she began to enjoy her work. After a few years, she matured into a full-fledged chef. For some reason, my mother-in-law discovered she worked there and started frequenting the restaurant. Upon realizing her ex-daughter-in-law was there, she discreetly threatened her for discounts. While she declined absurd demands, past traumas influenced her to yield to some. The connection my mother-in-law spoke of referred to the ex-wife. When I questioned why she hadn't communicated my allergies to the restaurant, my mother-in-law feigned ignorance. I knew about your allergies, so I must have told them. Maybe it's the staff's oversight, she countered defensively, placing the blame on the restaurant staff. Given that the reservation call was handled by the ex-wife, it's probable that my mother-in-law deliberately didn't mention the allergies, intending to pin the blame on the restaurant. However, I was already onto her game. Considering the restaurant's stringent guidelines on allergies, if informed, they'd have accommodated my dietary needs. Moreover, they record calls for dispute resolutions, so it would be easy to verify who was at fault. When confronted with this, my mother-in-law, not anticipating recorded evidence, fell silent. I pressed on. You've always been cautious about my allergies. Why did you not mention them this time? Until now, my mother-in-law was well aware of the dangers of allergies and always showed concern, so I never imagined she'd do something like this. She knew that by doing this, it wouldn't end well for me. Given that we had a good relationship until now, I was curious why she acted this way and sought an explanation. After a brief silence, she shouted defiantly, I despise you. You outshine me. You deserve some pain. She was envious since I received praise at work and was more liked in the neighborhood than her. She arrogantly claimed that even if I spoke out, no one would believe me. If it weren't for this incident, I wouldn't have believed she was capable of such actions. Thus, I had collected evidence to reveal her true nature and confronted her with it. Everyone would believe me, 
My parents and my husband, John, are here, listening to everything. Plus, this conversation is being recorded. Everyone present had heard her berate me and her intentions to purposely expose me to allergens. In fact, after leaving the restaurant, I immediately went to my parents' house and had John join us. I had informed them of the situation, and we were discussing our next steps when she called. So I swiftly switched the call to the speaker and started recording it for evidence. As a result, we had her incriminating statements on tape. She was taken aback by my revelation and asked in a shaky voice, Wait, is John there with you? She never expected her son to find out and asked in a trembling voice. In response, her son, who had been silent and emotionless, gathering evidence, spoke up. I heard everything. I can't believe you do something like this, Mom, he said in a suppressed angry tone. She hastily began making excuses. It wasn't like that. I didn't mean her. Her desperate attempt seemed insincere, especially after her earlier outburst. His anger was evident as he shouted not only towards Kate, but also towards Emily. I don't even want to think of you as my mother anymore. We're cutting ties. Given the true nature of the mother he had trusted, John was beyond furious. He then declared his estrangement from her, ignoring her cries. Furthermore, my parents said that they would sue her for attempted murder, and John cut off the call, disregarding her voice. Later, when John informed his father about the incident, he was furious and suggested divorce, eventually throwing her out of the house. With no relatives to rely on, no income, and being a housewife, she clung desperately, pleading and crying. Her husband, feeling a final bit of pity, put her in a basic apartment, paid the first month's rent, and told her to find works so she could support herself. But having been a housewife, she seemed to lack the drive to work, and for some reason clung to both John and me. She barged into our house demanding money, but we drove her away, telling her to earn it herself, especially John, who was extremely stern, ensuring she wouldn't approach our house again. Later on, rumors suggested she started working at a nearby supermarket, but she seemed quite disheveled. Given her nasty attitude, she had no one to rely on and seemed to be struggling on her own. I hope she continues to work hard, both for her own expenses and to pay us the compensation. We want her to stay out of our lives. As for why she did what she did, it seems she was jealous of me and wanted to see me suffer. John's ex-wife had moved in after graduating from a vocational school and became a housewife. She was submissive, obeyed her mother-in-law, and had a quiet nature. Due to her unpleasant character, which made her disliked by women, and her enjoyment in bullying those weaker than herself, she used to take out her stress on John's ex-wife. However, I am independent, working, and getting promotions. I had a higher social status than her, and was well regarded in our neighborhood. Initially, she liked me, thinking I was a competent daughter-in-law, but she gradually grew jealous. Being unable to bully me, she wished I'd be in a position where I'd become incompetent, wanting to look down on me. After the explosive call when John and his father confronted her, she confessed everything, leading to their declaration of cutting ties with her. Later, John apologized to his ex-wife for not noticing the bullying. At that time, he was new at his job and deeply trusted his mother, which blinded him to her behavior. Still, he felt he should have noticed and was regretful. His ex-wife assured him she was over it. She's dating someone now, and their conversation ended on a peaceful note. John felt relieved, knowing she was genuinely happy. Thanks to her help, I became friends with John's ex-wife. She's also career-oriented, and we get along well. Although she's his ex-wife, there's nothing concerning their relationship, and I'm glad to have a friend close in age. After settling matters with the mother-in-law, John and his father threw me a promotion party. 
with the celebration from the two of them, I felt happy and determined to continue working hard without worrying about my mother-in-law.